<laughs> I'm thirsty. You didn't know you wanted it until you got it! It's the newest flavor for America's favorite soft drink! Why not try Orange Vanilla Coca-Cola? The classic Coca-Cola taste combines forces with a generous squirt of vanilla flavoring and a strong twist of orange nectar. The Swiss may call it spetsy, but you'll call it delicious! Steak. Oh, I almost forgot it was you hiding behind there. Sweet, noble Tyrion. You went out like a stun. Must you haunt my every step? What do you suppose this is? I'm really not in the mood to read mail right now on the air, so I'll just set this down right here and we'll address that in a little bit, okay? Uh... Hmm. I expected to see you again. One last time, at least. You mean you're here to rub it in? I'd say you certainly are! When Tyrion used to be here and he did something wrong, I never would rub his nose in it the way that you guys do to me on a daily basis! What makes me the lucky one, huh? To be saddled with my personal white devil dog? Jinxing my afterlife? Sounds vaguely familiar. I am error. I'm sorry. So you mean, take it off the rear? <sighs> Never ever get used to that. So anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, welcome, entrance to hell. Coca-Cola, orange, vanilla, coke, now we have completely run out of flavors. It is official, I mean, I mean, I like a good cream sickle as much as the next guy, but was anybody on the planet asking for this? I tend to doubt it. Just the thought of orange and vanilla and Coke, it just piled on top of each other. Blah, they're just flavors that just don't go together. They just, they, they can't become one unit. Think of it this way. I love chocolate and I love hamburgers, but the idea of a chocolate hamburger, does that sound good to you? It does? Sick fuck. Well, it doesn't sound good to me! For as long as I remember, I'll be willing to wait here for as long as Coke existed! There has never been orange-flavored Coke! Never in the history of history! We've had cherry Coke. We've had vanilla Coke. Orange is one of the big flavors out there. I mean, it's one of the big three. You always think of cherry, orange, and grape when you think of flavoring anything. So wouldn't you think that they would have tried to put 
orange flavor into Coke by now? And if they did, why haven't we seen it on store shelves until now? Because it tasted gross. And they knew it tasted gross and they didn't release it out of the market because they knew it would be a flop. So why does it exist now? I'll tell you the simple reason why it exists now. Because everything exists now! We got bacon condoms, we got pickle slushies, we got chili beans in our chocolate, and salads. Don't even get me started on salads. We put so much fruit into our salads, when does it cease being a salad and turn into a fruit salad? Where's the threshold? <laughs> so now here in the year 2019, it has finally become a reality. Orange vanilla Coca-Cola. Now, I love Coca-Cola as much as the next guy. I mean, I love many different flavors of Coke. I love vanilla Coke, I love cherry Coke, I love all the different kinds of Cokes that's out there. But something about this just, I don't know, is Coke capable of doing no wrong? This is the ultimate test right here. This is such a Pepsi thing to do. Coca-Cola, I always assumed that you were better than this. And I owe my very being, my very existence to Coca-Cola. I mean, if you were to sum up my entire life in one tiny little phrase, it would just read Coca-Cola. And everybody would know what my life was all about. Coca-Cola is my lifeblood. I'm like Mac from Mac and Me. If you prick my finger, I bet you I would bleed Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, are you capable of wrongdoing? Because I think you're in the deep end of the swimming pool, my friend. I don't think there's any way you can pull this off. There is no way that this is gonna taste any way appetizing. This is Mission Impossible right here! No time like the present, gonna pop it open. Well, at least the fizz is nice and powerful. I mean, that's the one thing I can say about Coke other, over other cola products. And it definitely does have a unique aroma, and I can already smell that orange and vanilla smell right there, which is normally a very good smell, but mixed with Coke, it just... You know what? I'm gonna put this thing in my mouth, I'm gonna taste it, I'm gonna tell you exactly what it tastes like because I have a feeling, just from the way that this smells, I know exactly what I'm about to say. I can say this, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I could never imagine spending good money on this if there's just a regular unflavored Coke on the shelf right next to this. It tastes exactly like you'd think. It's like somebody took a vanilla Coke and just poured a little bit of sun kissed into it. Ah! You know what? Screw this. I'm just gonna get through it. I will tell you exactly what this experience is like. Now, I'm an old dude, and I remember when self-service soda fountains first became a thing. And you can imagine just what a thrill that is for a child to just go to a soda fountain, see all those flavors just at eye level, and be able to choose them at your heart's content. I mean, before we were limited to whatever the stingy guy behind the counter would give us. Here, we just had the freedom to go up and, and do it for ourselves, and we would, you know, we had the freedom to fill it up halfway if we weren't that thirsty, or, or overflow it if we were really, really thirsty. And, and what did we do? I mean, I can't speak for everyone out there, but I can't picture anyone else doing it any other way. I would go up with my extra large cup, and I would fill it up with my favorite flavor. For me, it was always Coca-Cola. For other people, it would be Diet Coke, or like, like Dr. Pepper, Sunkist, whatever. Actually, nobody likes Sunkist. And I would take it back to my seat with my meal and I'd drink it down the bottom. And it was delicious. And if I was thirsty, I'd go back up to the fountain and I'd get myself another one. And I'd just go right over there and just fill it up to the very, very top. And then take it back to the table and drink it. Delicious, delicious, and I had the freedom to do it all by myself. Isn't that cool? And then, when we were about to leave, I would take that cup, or I'd go up to the fountains one last time, and I would experiment. I would put the cup underneath the Coca-Cola and I would go and fill it up halfway with Coke and then I would put it over by the ginger ale and go fill it up a little, a little bit of spritz of ginger ale on there. Maybe I'd put some grape soda and I'd have this weird Technicolor marvel in front of me and I would drink it. And you know what? Sometimes it would taste okay. Most times it would taste like garbage. But the moral of the story is this. There is a reason why you don't take that cup and you go to the soda fountain the first time and experiment. You only do that when there's barely any room left in your stomach for food and or drink because it's always nasty. I mean, certain flavors just do not go together. And that's, this is exactly what that reminds me 
of. It reminds me of experimenting with flavors as a kid at Burger King, just throwing everything into the pot and seeing what sticks. And you know what? Other than it's sticking to my ribs, it's really not doing a whole lot for me. So if I were to give this a half rating, I'm going to give it two halves. This is not going to be around for the long haul. So if you really want to taste this, do it now. Because you know what? I would bet dollars to donuts that this is not even going to be available by the time this episode airs on YouTube. Because it's two parts gross and one part pointless. So this is your good buddy saying until next time where I once again answer the question, is it yuck, is it yum, or is it yuck? Oh, it is way too late for, I'm not, no. No, I refuse to do that. I refuse to do that. I refuse to do that. I refuse to do that! Just... No. Just fade that music down. Fade it out. And fade the other music in. Fade that music out. Other music in. Fade it out. Fade that in. Out! In! Out! In. It's more like it. Signing off. Oh, silly me, I forgot about the letter. Now what could this possibly be? Dear Mr. Pancake 603, we, the high standing officials at Global Docs Industries, have been paying close attention to the Yucker Yum program and its drastic dip in quality in the last recent weeks. You have been specially contracted to provide a service not only to read on air announcements for Pink Tope and only Fruit Incorporated, but show enthusiasm for their wonderful products. In the last month, we have evaluated your performance and you have fallen far below standard. We understand that you are going through some personal issues, but there comes a time to rise above and find strength and be professional. If you cannot find the enthusiasm, Enthusiasm for your ad reads, you will need to feign enthusiasm in an incredible way, otherwise you may be considered for termination. At such point, we will convene to decide whether Yucker Yum carries on with the replacement host, or if the show is ultimately cancelled. We are wondering if you are a candidate for a psych evaluation, which Global Docs will provide for you at no charge. Please see the attached business cards. Get your act together, Hottie Scotty, or there will be CONSEQUENCES! Sincerely, Balthazar Quail, Global Docs CEO. Whoops. Agree Shampoo! Now what better spokesperson can there be for a hair care product such as... ME! Yeah, what you think I was gonna say, you jabroni? What, you think I can't do an ad read by myself anymore? You think I'm bringing in all these special guests to take the heat off of myself? Eh eh! I can still do it! Take a little gander at this! Agree is the leader in shampoos and conditioners in these here United States. Makes your hair flow like water. Like Frankie Kazarian's hair. Well, when it was long, why in the hell did he cut that hair? Now he looks like everyone else. I heard he donated his hair to charity. Well, that's all well and good, but what, did it not grow back? I guess I've seen it happen before. It happened to Adrian Adonis. What? Kurt Angle? What? Molly Holly? What? Eric Bischoff? What? Raven? Ugh, I had to go remind me of that one. They didn't just shave that dude, they damn near scalped him. You know, they also used a grease shampoo to clean the water slides at Action Park, a prior sponsor of the show. Bet you didn't know that! The park patrons did more than just keep that place in biznatch, but they circulated soap with their own bodies traveling down the water slides. If you came to the park with a grease shampoo, they'd actually knock a couple ducats off your ticket. Damn, what a generous guy that Johnny Knoxville was. It's a shame he's dead. Now what about me, you ask? Why am I the perfect spokesperson for a grease shampoo when I'm bolder than a $2 steak? Cause I still put the sh** on my scalp and I make my wife massage into whatever follicles are left up there. Makes me feel nice and tingly. Next time you're at one of my signings, take special note of my head. It looks extra buff, got a little bit of a glean on it. Hey, you throw a little extra ducats my way, I might even let you smell it. That's if we can both agree on it. <laughs>